AP Calculus, section 6.1, page 2. Looking at this one right here, the, an the integral of cotangent squared theta d theta. And again, we run into a little bit of trouble here because if you think about all six trig functions, not one of them, when you do the derivative, do we get cotangent squared. So you need to think back to pre-calculus and remember this identity that says cotangent squared theta plus one is cosecant squared theta. If you have forgotten that, you can always generate that by using sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, and then divide out everything by sine squared. and you will end up with cotangent squared plus one is equal to cosecant squared. So now I'll come over here and let's replace out this cotangent squared with cosecant squared theta minus one d theta, and we do the antiderivative of each piece. What thing, when you take the derivative of it, gives you cosecant squared? Well, that's negative cotangent theta and the antiderivative of a one, many of you will wanna just slap down an X, be very careful. Our variable here is a theta, so this is minus theta, and then plus a C. All right, I do want to caution you here that the trig identities and derivatives are coming back to haunt you You need to review them. The trig identities are in section 1.6. That was in your summer packet that we went over way back in August of 2016. Derivatives, chapter three, but also in the middle of chapter five, we gave you the opportunity to pick up that sheet, again, that listed all of the trig functions and their derivatives. So you'll need to dig that out again and go back through these. All right, moving on here then, looking at some initial conditions. Initial conditions is information to help find C. Oops, missed a D here. To help find C. More examples, and looking at this, I realized that I forgot to tell you what to do on these examples. On these examples, I want you to find y. When we look at number eight, we see dy dx is four x squared plus three x minus one, and y of two is five. There's the derivative. Let's just anti-differentiate each side. That'll give us y equals four thirds x cubed plus three halves x squared minus an x plus a c. This notation here says when you plug in two for x into the y equation, you get five. So y is five is four thirds times two cubed plus three halves times two squared minus a two plus a c. Doing some mental arithmetic here, two cubes eight times four thirds, that's 32 thirds plus, here's four times three halves, six, minus two plus a C. Uh, taking that four, moving that to the other side, that's one is 32 thirds plus a C. 10 and two thirds, we subtract that 10 and two thirds over there, we're gonna get that C is negative nine and two thirds or you could have negative 29 over three. We are not done here. That's just what the constant is. I asked you to find y. I'm running out of space here, so I'm gonna have to kind of squeeze it in sideways. y is 4 thirds x cubed plus 3 halves x squared minus x 
plus a C, so minus 9 and 2 thirds. There's your answer for number 8. Let me turn it right side up for you. All right, moving on to number 9. We recognize this notation of d squared y over dx squared as the second derivative. Write it this way. y double prime is negative x to the negative 2. Do an antiderivative. The antiderivative of a y prime, excuse me, y double prime is y prime. Add 1 to the exponent here, x to the negative 1. Divide out by that new exponent, and we'll just have x to the negative 1 plus a c. At this point, figure out what that c is right away, and we can use this piece of information. y prime at 2 is negative 3, so we have negative 3 is 2 to the negative first plus a c. 2 to the negative first is a half. So c is negative 3 and a half. We can take that information and come up here then, and we have y prime now is x to the negative 1 minus 3 and a half. If we do an antiderivative, and you try to use that add 1 to the exponent thing, that gives us x to the 0 and then divide by the new exponent, oh, we can't do that. That doesn't work. So I need you to think that this x to the negative 1 is 1 over x. The antiderivative then is natural log, absolute value x. And then the antiderivative of a negative 3 and a half is negative 3 and a half x, but don't use mixed numbers. Write it as 7 halves x plus a different c. That c, not the same as this c. They could be the same numerically, but more than likely not. Let's substitute in. We have y of e cubed is 5. So 5 is the natural log of absolute value e cubed minus 7 halves e cubed plus a c. Natural log of e cubed is just 3. Pre-calculus, logs coming back. Solving for c here, c is going to be 2 plus 7 halves e cubed. And that's it, there's c. Final answer then is for y. y equals natural log absolute value x minus 7 halves x plus 2 plus 7 halves e cubed. Ooh, that kind of tiny down there. Hopefully you can read it all. Okay, last one. The acceleration of an object is 50 feet per second squared. Acceleration is 50. Find the object's position and uh, find the object's position if s of 1 is 10 and v of 1 is 70. All right, acceleration is 50. Acceleration is the derivative of velocity. So velocity is the antiderivative of acceleration. And the antiderivative here is 50 t, we're in time, plus c. Plugging in this initial condition for velocity, um, 70 is 50 times 1 plus c which tells us that constant is 20. So now we can get that velocity is 50t plus 20. Position is the antiderivative of velocity. So position is 25t squared plus a 20t plus a c. Plugging in that initial condition for position, s of 1 is 10. 10 is 25 times 1 squared, 20 times 1 plus a c. 
25 and 20 is 45. C is negative 35. We are not done. Find the object's position. S is 25t squared plus 20t minus 35. And there we go. Thank you for joining me.